Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel and today I'm going to be tackling a crack in brickwork and I'm going to be using this brick fix kit that you can get from merchants all over the country. The thing about cracks is you've got to look at them. If they're major cracks, you may want to get a structural surveyor in and just have a look at it. Now this is very common to find cracks under windows and the reason that happens is you've got a lot of weight on the building here, either side of the window. You've got a huge amount of weight but there's no real weight in the middle. So if there's going to be any movement, this is your weak spot in this panel underneath the window. So very common to find it. The movement could be a very, very slight bit of subsidence, settlement, but this building is over 100 years old. We're not worried about that. It could just be the bit of shrinkage that's taken place and it's just opened up. But whatever it is, we can fix it with this kit. So what we're going to do is we're going to tie it back together with the helical ties which are included. You get everything in the kit to do the job except the angle grinder to take out the mortar. Now I'm going to be using an angle grinder. You could do it with a little hammer and chisel depending on how soft that mortar is. You can see that this is lime mortar and it's going to be very easy for me to take it out. So this is a special grout. You can't use sand and cement for this job. You need to use the actual grout that's supplied with it and that will lock the bars in place. And I've seen jobs where they've been all the way around a house with this and they've tied the house together like putting a, a big belt around it. So it's possible to do some very big jobs with it. But I would say that for the DIYer, sticking to jobs like this, innocent cracks, is probably the best way to start. So I need to take these out to a depth of 35 mil, but I'll go back over them in a minute. And what I'm going to do is every third course. So we go one there and the next one down could be there or it could be there. I think in this case, I'm going to make it there. We've got enough bar here, so I might as well do kind of belt and braces job on it. You can see that this mortar is just lime, very forgiving. If you've got sand and cement, it might take a little bit more but I'm using a thin blade. Some people may say, why don't you use the thicker 10 mil blade? The reason I'm not using that is that sometimes it's very difficult to stop it cutting into the brickwork. So if I go through once very carefully, and then I'll go through again, but using a thicker blade is great if you're doing a whole repointing job, but for a DIYer for a first time, a thin standard blade, these are very, very cheap to buy, is a better bet. So we're looking at a depth of 35 millimetres. It doesn't really matter if it's 40 millimetres, you know, that kind of thing is fine. Don't want to go too far. That's actually 30, so we really need a little bit more out of there. I've come to the limit on that cutter, but it doesn't matter because we can just scrape the rest out. Because it's sand and lime, it'll come out very easily. In fact, in some places it is deeper anyway. We'll just give it a good rake out. And then when we've done that, we need to get rid of the dust here by vacuuming. You can do that by brushing it out or just raking it out. But I've got this wonderful little device here, which just... does the job in seconds. So you can see I'm raking out here and some of it is gone some of it hasn't but what I've also found is the depth of the beds is different here so you may see that we've got a nice thick 10 mil bed here and then further down it goes to next to nothing there and you've just got to put up with that so long as you can push that bar in get the resin in there it doesn't really matter but it just makes it slightly more awkward because you can't always get the blade in there without cutting the brick. Now, before I start squirting the grout in here, I'm going to give it one final dust off, but I just want to make sure that the bar actually fits in. This is a six mil bar. So on a 10 mil bed, we should be absolutely fine, but you don't want to be squirting the, the grout in there and then finding that you can't fit the bar in. So we're good there. We're a bit tight on this one. I'll take a bit more out on there. That one, we're not long enough. So a little bit more prep work to do and then we'll be there. So you see here where it's really thin, we're going to struggle to get that bar in there. But what you can do is you can 
rather than try and cut the face of the brick out like that, which will always end up looking a bit ragged, what you can do is just take your angle grinder, put the blade in, and then just angle the blade down slightly. And what you'll find is it will just skin off the little aris on the edge of that brick, the same as it has here. And when that's pointed up, that won't show. But if you try to widen the brick by doing this, you'll just make a mess of it. So the other thing I've got to do is rake out these perps. You can see where the crack is because we want to close those up with the pointing. We don't have to worry about closing those up with the resin. It won't do any good, just the pointing. From a cosmetic point of view, if you were trying to just disguise the fact that you'd repaired a crack, you would probably go all the way across the wall and repoint a whole section of it. And that way it wouldn't draw the eye to the bit of repair you've done. It just depends what you're trying to achieve. I'm going to do the crack repair here, see what the customer thinks of it. If they don't like it, I'll carry on and I'll repoint this bit of wall, but I've got to stop somewhere, otherwise I'll be right up to the top of the house. Now I've managed to achieve 35 mil depth on this one, which is great. You could get away with 25 millimeter if it's a cavity wall like this. If it's a solid wall, you really need that 35, maybe even 40 millimeters so that you can get further into the wall. Now, the other thing is that a lot of people will find that they've actually got a cracked brick. We've been very lucky here. And the reason is this is lime mortar and lime mortar is very forgiving. It's weaker than the bricks and it tends to let the building move without cracking the bricks. If you've got sand and cement and you've got a bit of movement, you will find that you've got cracked bricks and you'll have to deal with those. Now, if you can get replacement bricks, that's absolutely fine. Sometimes it's difficult. You can get some secondhand ones maybe, but if not, then you can do a repair on the brick. You could go and buy some dye to put in the mortar and try to do it, but I find that doesn't really work very well and it tends to fade in the ultraviolet light. So a little bit later, we're going to go and find a little crack brick and do that repair for those people that are interested in that part. So when you finish raking out, before you start putting the grout in, it's a good idea just to give the whole thing a hose down, get rid of any dust, damp it up slightly and brush out the crack. So you're absolutely clean and you're ready to go with the grout. First thing is we need to mix the grout up. Now to save you having to do any measuring, they actually give you the liquid, the additive to go straight in. Now I am instinctively a powder to water type of person. In other words, I add the powder to the mix. Because you've got a whisk in the kit, it doesn't really matter because it's all gonna get mixed up. And this is a drill I use specifically for mixing, by the way, so don't make any rude comments about it. This material, you've got to mix it for at least two minutes. But what I find with these materials is that if you mix it for at least two minutes, you leave it there to settle for a couple of minutes, and then you give it a re-whisk. The open time is a lot longer. If you whisk it once and then start using it, you may find it goes off faster, but it's called a fixothropic material. So it means that it will beat up again, but don't beat it up after the second go. Don't be tempted to give it another whisk later on. Whisk it, leave it to sit, whisk it again, and then it's ready to go.
Okay, so there may be people looking at this who will think where I was going over the grouting, it was a little bit shallow. But the important thing is, if you go straight on with the pointing and the grouting hasn't cured, you're fine because it's wet on wet and it will all knit together. If you leave the grouting to dry for 24 hours, then you need to make sure you've got sufficient depth to get a reasonable amount of pointing in there. And generally that would be 10 millimeters minimum. <laughs> 